Hello, everybody, and welcome back to an alright podcast. Remember, it's not the best podcast, but it's not the worst podcast. It's just an alright podcast. Guys, we're back with another episode, and here we go again. We have another guest. Now, she's an actor or an actress, whatever they like to be called, because I know there's some of them that only like the other word and one word as well. But it's Rebecca Rose Flynn. And I'm going to call you Rose Flynn because I have a friend that's been on this now, and her name is Rebecca Flynn as well. Uh, we both know her. Um, yeah. Uh, and like that. So, Rebecca, please give me a little introduction about yourself. Uh, well, hello, everyone that's watching. Uh, my name is Rebecca Rose Flynn. Um, I'm an actor from Bray, County Wicklow. And I, don't, I always find these questions kind of tricky when you're asked to introduce yourself. Hmm. I don't really know what to say about myself other than I'm an actor. <laughs> yeah. See, that's a good thing as well, because every actor that's, come on, that's came on here, I, I asked them the same question I'm going to ask you as well. Do you find it more easier, easy to um, be someone else than yourself? Like, do you get me? Like, you know, like if someone says, uh, you know, when you're doing an audition type, it's like, oh, talk about yourself. And you have to talk about yourself for like five minutes. Do you find that difficult more than if you are able to like talk about a character? Yeah, the like, irony oh. is I'd probably rehearse that more than rehearsing the actual scene. Like I would be like, right, what are my five sentences that I'm going to say about myself to sound interesting or to have a, you know, a random fact about myself? Um, whereas the actual scene itself, mm. you have your own kind of preparation for that or your own yeah. kind of understanding. But when it comes to actually talking about yourself, yeah, it's it's difficult. You're, if you're putting yourself on the spot, you're, yeah. you can't excuse the character. You're, you're, it's you're only yourself to kind of to blame if you say anything. Yeah, weird. it's 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 much. It's because I've I've asked them all. Um, James Bourne as well. I've been mm. saying to him, and he goes, "Man, when I was I was me and him, we tried to do the audition tape for the Young Offenders. Uh, they needed extras oh, or something or whatever. And mm. it's like, right, do a do an improv sketch. And I was able to do an improv sketch. I was like, easy. But then it's like, right, you need to talk yourself, talk about yourself for five minutes. So I was like, um, I I, I couldn't talk about yeah. myself. And I was like, what the fuck is happening? Um, but she was like, what do you like? It's like, um. I like makeup. <laughs> it's like, I don't know, reading. <laughs> and, you, and you want to Walking, be so breathing. different from everybody else that's doing the tape. You want to be, yeah. you, you, don't mean, you want Unique. to be extra out there. Yeah, me, but it's, yeah. It's, it's, it's difficult as well. But um, what I want to go to as well, when I want to start off it is the, the younger years are so like that as well. When you first start getting mm. interested in um, acting and so like that as well. I, I just want to know for me and for the viewers at home, what age did you start getting interested in acting and wanted to pursue that? Um, I was very young. I was probably about five or six um, yeah. when I started becoming, you know, a drama queen and wanting to be centre of attention. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I think I was, yeah, it's probably about six or seven when I first started going to like a, a drama on a Saturday morning. And I pretty much did that right up until the age of about 18. Um, I just progressed with either um, little plays like in a, in a town hall or a um, then progressing to musical theatre um, in the Mermaid Arts Theatre here in Bray. And yeah, kind of just developed as, as I got older. But I would have been about six or seven when I first started and just never stopped. <laughs> Gee, that's, that's dedication right there. See, young kids yeah. when they're younger, they, they want to do stuff like that, likes that as well. And then they just lose an interest for it. But for likes yourself, that's what you wanted to do, mm. you know, what you wanted to do from a very young age. And Well, th there was a, a gap maybe a year or two when studies got involved. Mm. Um, I know I took a gap for, I think, my junior cert. Um, and then in fourth year, I had my fourth year musical. So that kind of, yeah. I was able to do that for that particular year. And then leaving cert was kind of, you know, had to kind of put the, the study hat on and, and mm. not have too many distractions. Because obviously plays and, and musical theatre and all those kind of performances are put on kind of around, well, it, it changes, but it's, you know, the beginning of, of the year kind of pushing towards, I think we had plays, or we think we did musicals around March, April. Um, and then obviously May, June, you have your leaving cert. Yeah. So. Yeah, that was it's, an idea. but but it's okay to give them breaks as well though do you get me it's, it's oh totally if you're doing what you're doing for so long and um, mm. it's okay to take the year off or whatever if you had to take two, two years off because that's you had a good reason to and it kind of gives you a reason like it, it's like a reset button you, you do that and then you get back into it and it, it feels all new again and so like that was that like that for you when you when you had to go back into it after the leaving cert what was it difficult to go back in and try to do again well, all the natural the irony is after my leaving cert, um, I didn't do acting. Oh. Um, so I went on and did a degree in education and training. 
mm-hmm. in DCU. Um, I thought about doing acting in college, yeah. but there's something there's something in me that just wasn't ready. I wasn't ready to, um, I don't know what it was. Like I knew it was a huge passion of mine and a huge love of mine, but in terms of making it a full time career or or full time study, for some reason I wasn't ready. Um, and another huge passion of mine was um, sign language and deaf studies, um, as well as like the special needs community. And that's kind of the road I, I chose to go down. Um, and I did a bit of, of sign language um, and as well as like my degree. And then once that finished, it was weird. It was like, I wasn't, I still wasn't sure what I wanted to do. I knew I probably had to progress and do like a master's degree or specialize in something. My degree was so broad um, in terms of education and or training like in a business setting. So it was kind of, you had to pick a genre or somewhere to go um from that so i just took a year out and just decided right i'll just have to really think about what i want to do um and that's when that inspiration of 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 acting came back yeah um and that came back like from say obviously you know 18 19 sitting your leaving cert getting your you know your your points to like 21 22 and mm. um, so i think i needed those couple of years to kind of like grow up in terms of like if you want to make acting or any kind of career in the arts ago you really have to have a bit more grounding I think in yourself to not be afraid to just take a leap of faith mm. that's that's a good that's a good answer and you know what I just realized now we were literally just talking about talk about yourself and usually when we say talk about ourselves, uh take cameras or sorry that and auditions what you done done just there if I was um, a scout or whatever, or if I was doing that, I was looking for people and I said, talk about yourself, that right there, what you just said, just literally perfectly describes who you are as a person. And it shows that it's natural. Do you get me? And yeah, you, yeah. You, you do it without even knowing it. And then, but when you know that there's pressure and then you have to, you have to do something in front of the camera. So, totally, you, you don't totally. have a, so what you've done just there, like you literally described yourself, what you've done <laughs> and you didn't even realize it. And I was like, holy shit, wait, hold on, hold on there. Just let like, I keep talking about it. Keep talking. I'll just edit that clip and put that into every yeah, show. Put it into show every, just get my fucking <laughs> into every audition over. I do. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, but th- there you go. Like we, we don't even know. It's like when the camera's on, I know that I, I, I wouldn't know as much as you would get me you've done a lot more yeah. acting jobs i'd be only known to myself doing comedy sketches so that i know what i have to do but when you're working for someone else you there's that kind of pressure as well that you want to do mm. work. you want to show them that maybe they they can work with me again and if i if i do a really good oh, job completely. they might want me for so but when when you were when you were doing um when you were younger and you were doing all the theaters and so i want to ask as yeah. well what was the one what was the one show or the one theater or the one thing that actually kind of like clicked in your head and you wanted this is like all right this is what i want to do this is this is this is the reason this is what made me want to do it oh that's really difficult because yeah. post um like when i did go to study drama um like before that it was all theater mm. and then literally i only got introduced to acting for camera um in biffy in, in the brain institute for education um which i had never even thought about it never obviously I, think about it but it, for some reason I was always theatre kid musical theatre singing dancing West End Broadway that was the kind of like the dream as a kid yeah. um I'd say probably when I was 12 like the first musical mm. was uh, my first lead role uh with um Shivan's musical youth theatre shout out to Smith <laughs> um in Bray that was the first musical where I was a lead role and we did uh, an adaptation of The Wizard of Oz called mm. Oz and I was Dorothy and I felt like, oh my God, like I, I'm good enough to be the lead. Like I'm good enough to carry this, yeah. this, not carry it, but you know, um, just say carry it. You, you carry that. Come on, give yourself a bit of like, <laughs> yeah, you carry it probably. Uh, yeah, to, to, to carry the lead role, uh, essentially. And that was a huge boost in my confidence, especially like just going into first year, mm. um, in secondary school. And that was probably like, I remember that was the first time my dad okay my dad saw all my my shows and everything but i remember after that like he had a little bit of te- like a tear in his eye oh, or Jesus. like a little bit of a kind of like oh like uh, you know i'm proud of mm. my daughter or whatever and i was just like oh my god this like just <laughs> i don't know it resonated so well with me as mm. well and i was just like oh this this means a lot to to more than just me like yeah. my family see it in me as well so that was really reassuring at such a young age 
Yeah, that's what I want. I want that's why I wanted to ask as well. Perfect that you said that because I was going to ask what did like the likes of your ma or dad or so like that, um, anybody yeah. in your household, and um, what were they like when you went and started doing this? Were they very supportive at the start? Because obviously you're so young that they go right, she'll just do it for a while. But when they start saying, "Oh shit, no, this is what she really wants to do," like yeah. were she were they so supportive that would they be drive you to things and so like that as well? Mm. How, what were they like? Oh, like my parents, like I've been so lucky that my parents are like so supportive um in my career choice or even as as a child when it was a hobby um or auditioning for for certain things as, as a kid and, and going to um you know to dublin for different things and their, their encouragement of me to go to certain things um and then as an adult choosing as a career like it's not easy like there's you know there's no there's no way to to paint a nice picture it is difficult it's not an easy career choice um but i think knowing i have their like blessing if you will or knowing that they're there for me through the good times but more importantly through the bad times but because i think i've shown look i've you know i happened to just fall into a degree like i did something completely different um and i came back to acting um and i suppose the fact that i went through education doing different things shows i really want to do this like i'm coming full circle yeah. with it as well as the proofs in the pudding like if i'm doing you know obviously at the moment i'm i'm do more film acting um and they've seen my work and i suppose if i feel like if they didn't think it was worth my while i'd like to think they would tell me um and i ha i have got support from them and positivity and reassurance that's not just in my head you know the kind yeah. of way and that it's something that they they too believe like my mum always says to me she's like there's just something about it that i just I feel really positive in my bones that you know you're going to do well whatever you do but she's like i've never once worried about you entering into acting um and say my dad like my dad's so supportive when it comes to to watching my films anytime it's on online or anytime there's a link or something he's always like oh send it to me send it to me yeah. um so yeah i'm very very lucky that way very lucky. and is that where it kind of uh, that helps you with the confidence of going and doing it then because a lot of people when i know when they do it and um, they don't really have much confidence when they're going out to pursue something like that what mm. are you always a confident kid or wh where when did that start kicking in what age um i don't think i was particularly confident i wouldn't say i was underconfident either but I think maybe doing it from such a young age and learning to be silly and be stupid on stage and, you know, doing fun drama games that allow you to kind of not really care what other people think. Yeah. yeah. That kind of started from a young age. Now saying that, I mean, during everyone's teenage years, everyone cares about what other people think. I oh mean, yeah. We all, we all still care yeah. about what other people think. I don't give a fuck. Look at me. I don't care. Very <laughs> I don't care. Yeah. Um, but I think to, to a degree, like, oh, I, I definitely, I, I wouldn't necessarily say, it's like one of those, those people that if someone's very, very confident, but then in certain scenarios, they're very shy or they're very kind of maybe um, they're not as extroverted as people may think. I think I was probably a bit like that in that I kind of came across um, confident, mm. but in reality, it was just me kind of like, you know, not wanting anyone to think that I was shy because I was never a shy kid. Um, yeah. I, I was confident in myself, but I still, I still need reassur need reassurance from other people to of kind course, of know yeah, we all do yeah we, we all need that um yeah and i i did want to ask as well is that when you were like kind of growing up and you were in the teenagers or so and you were getting stuff did you ever did you ever have a point of like doubt that you're like maybe this isn't what i want to do because there is a lot of um people that are very creative <laughs> and whatever they yeah. do whether it's a music or they're doing live shows or so they just have a doubt because they might just have like that one bad show or so did you did you ever did you ever really have negative thoughts or doubts about what am i doing why am i doing this or did you did you like right oh yeah like I, every day like still like even during this quarantine situation i'm reviewing like my career i'm reviewing um is this right for me or um because it is difficult when you are self-managing essentially like i don't have an agent mm. um so i'm looking for like my own work and then you kind of when you don't put in the effort the only person to blame is yourself exactly but then sometimes you can't find things or um things don't come your way and vice versa things do come your way and you're you know extremely lucky and then you're like oh this is grand this is easy peasy mm. um but it's in the times where things are dry like at the moment um yeah. Um, which happens a lot in the industry as well. Um, never mind coronavirus, but 
yeah for sure like it is one of those jobs where you kind of have to you know pick yourself up after you know a rejection or um pick yourself up after something that maybe didn't turn as well as you thought it did or and especially nowadays a lot of people do like work for free and you're trying to get work for your portfolio um and if you do something you think is going to be good for free and it's not um you might feel a bit upset likewise if you do get paid for something but it's not something you're happy with to put into your show reel it's all about balance and it's all, it's quite um it's kind of tricky to kind of maneuver in between so there's so there's so many times where I, I would question um but i wouldn't question my passion or my um enthusiasm for the business and for myself like i don't i, do, I obviously have doubts about myself at times but you know i try to be positive and reassure myself because otherwise you drive yourself mad <laughs> yeah that's that's true and that, that's what i wanted to say as well um for the likes of right there's these two questions and um basically what was the worst audition you've ever done and what was the best audition you've ever done hmm that's kind of tricky yeah it could get me and i i know if you don't want to answer it because maybe then people you worked with people like that before and you just didn't get before but yeah yeah what did because i know that i'm kind of we're going from a positive thing going down but trust me i'll fucking bring it back up i'll bring (laughs) it back up but, but that's uh, the reality just, like just, that's life you know i just i just want to understand as much as i can yeah. because this podcast is also for me to learn about other people yeah. meet new people but also people that are watching right now these people right here and um, mm. they're going to they're going to get to know the person that i'm interviewing and I, I that's the same for me so i want to know as much as i can you get me um yeah so what yeah so what was the most we'll start off with the most what was the most difficult well you see it's kind of it's kind of difficult because um a lot of stuff i've done of late i've been referred to or i've been cast while it was written now that sounds so like no that's the same with oh my thing. god <laughs> yeah, that's the same with mine when i had when i have the hitman written i asked yeah. what you do it but you're you are you are in my mind for that role you were like right she just suits for that role Do you get me um, yeah like to that yeah so uh, um so it, I, auditions um a lot of stuff i've done lately um is, has been self-tapes so mm. Um, the audition process hasn't been positive or negative because it's it's all on me. Um, there's been some auditions where I might have to do something kind of not weird, but it's not like um, it's like improv, so it's kind of a bit kind of on mm. the spot, and you might mm. feel a bit kind of awkward or a bit kind of silly. Mm. They would kind of be a bit um, not like in a bad category, but just in a kind of non-traditional category yeah, yeah it doesn't go with a bit daft but if you get the you know if you get the gig you get the gig yeah um in one particular time i did so um it was worth acting silly for <laughs> um so yeah i i'm still in the process of actually getting more audition experience hmm. in the real world because obviously lately a lot a lot of stuff has been self-tapes and or referred to yeah and i, I want to ask as well is that um when you I, I want to know this for myself as well and if any mm. actors out there are watching when do you do you, even though you say you don't really have an a you don't have an agent what is the yeah. process of going through to get an agent and um, for people that could what's the process you have to go through if you if, if you that's know. the golden question isn't it yeah. um in my experience and from learning um i just recently graduated there from bow street well graduated in in such a way that we were kind of forced to graduate because obviously quarantine. So we will eventually have our, our showcase uh, filmed probably at the end of this year. But in Bow Street, I learned a lot about um, that kind of thing. And with their experience and their kind of advice, and then with other advice from other people I've kind of picked up along the way, my kind of um, tips would be get yourself a show that you're 100% happy with. Um, nothing in it is cringy nothing in it makes you feel that wasn't good enough try your best to just have an amazing show reel even if it's only two scenes that are like yeah that is me that is me 100 percent um but just having that um representation of yourself that you were happy with have maybe um max four minutes but i think they try to keep it down to two minutes and realistically they're only going to watch probably 40 seconds if yeah. even if they if they like you you know mm. um and then it's all about really just emailing mm. 
mm. emailing people, getting good headshots as well, because they're saying, um, and just emailing agents, emailing casting directors, and just saying, hey, I'm either if you're recently graduated from somewhere, um, please, you know, take a look at my show reel. Here's my recent headshots. Please consider me um, for um, representation. Yeah. And in in the subtext, put representation requ or request or application mm -hmm. form or just application. Um, and really just like promote yourself and put yourself out there by emailing these people. Um, I have yet to do that because I am still waiting for a few things again that I want to show off and mm -hmm. um, so it's the best show reel I can have mm -hmm. and that's even hard but one piece of information I'll always remember from um, a Q&A that we had with Suzanne Norris in Bow Street was if you have a, a show reel right now but in six months time you have either just one, one piece from a short film um, or, or anything but you know in six months time your show reel might be a bit better it is worth waiting those six months and emailing in six months time than it is emailing now. Yeah. So like, just wait, be patient. Um, because if you e email now, maybe 70% happy with an application, you might not hear anything. But if you're 100% happy with something, at least you know that's my best work to yeah. date. Or my, yeah. like, I'm, and you won't doubt yourself. You, you won't yeah. doubt yourself on this. Like, yeah. yeah. Um, so I'm still yet to do that, as I say. But um, that's, <laughs> that's my uh, two cents on that. <laughs> That's good. Um, I, I do want to go into um, the likes of no Wi-Fi. I join, mm. well, not a giant, but I, I went to one or two sessions and um, I, I, I liked it. Um, I was sitting there and I was kind of like, right, there's these guys and they're, they're like bouncing ideas off each other and so, and they're also checking up on each other and seeing everybody, how everybody's doing. That's, and that's nice as well. But um, yeah. you're, you're a member of that and you've been a member of that for a while, but I don't actually mm. know your background of that. So um, how long have you been um, attending the no Wi-Fi? So no Wi-Fi, I'm pretty sure, I think it was three years ago last September was when it first kind of roughly originated. and. I had just started Biffy that September and it was actually really weird how it all happened because I was only learning um, acting for film at the time and then I get a message from Donna Rourke who also attended Biffy a few years prior and he was a filmmaker and he I think when he was in Biffy he actually asked me did I want to audition and this is before I even considered doing acting again mm -hmm. and I think he just knew I was interested in acting and I said yeah I'd love to I'd love to audition um for his graduation piece but I didn't end up auditioning and then years passed and then it was like as if he thought of me again mm -hmm. um I maybe thought maybe I'd be interested in doing something now which was perfect timing because I, I completely was uh so he asked me to audition for a film called Forward uh by Joe Morris and that was the first film I'm pretty sure that No Wi-Fi produced, um, which was mad because I know I didn't know no, who No, no Wi-Fi was. Mm. Um, I didn't know there was a community like that in Bray. And I have to say, without a doubt, North Wicklow Films, com that whole community completely boosted my confidence in terms of acting. Mm. Like I got a lot of a lot of work and a lot of. Um, personal growth and, and development in my acting skills through no Wi-Fi. Mm. Obviously I was doing stuff in college as well, but stuff in college, everyone's amateurs. I know yeah. obviously no Wi-Fi is still an amateur group. Yeah. People are coming from backgrounds where they've had a lot of experience. They might have had experience on professional sets, they have professional equipment. Of course, if you had a professional equipment, mm. but people are learning, everyone's learning, experiencing exactly. the same thing at the same, the same time, same which is even more important as well. Um, but there's just a little bit of an edge with no Wi-Fi because I was working with people that, you know, um, wanted to produce something for their own personal passion. It wasn't for an assignment. Um, and there's a slight difference in doing things for, you know, work and pleasure, obviously. Um, so, yeah, hugely indebted, in, indebted, indebted mm -hmm. uh, to no Wi-Fi um, for, for that. And that's where I kind of started and then just never left, really. <laughs> And uh, his it name is isn't me. it Brian Matthews, isn't it? That's his name, yeah. Brian. Yeah, but Brian, I can see that Brian is like, would you call him like the, like the leader of our so like he's the main guy, is he? Um, yeah, currently he's like the kind of I suppose organizer spokesperson, yeah. um, for No Wi Fi, um, and yeah, yeah, because he he was very when I went in he was very welcoming, um, yeah, 
he was yes. he, you know the likes of that and you can you can tell by him that he's just a nice general like nice guy you get me like he's yeah and he, like he's dedicated to keep to keep it going you know yeah. like for the past three nearly three yeah. and a half years um you know which is a credit to him mm. and it's good that like where i grew up there was no one that was interested in making films you get me like uh, there was no yeah. one that i was the only one around my estate that would do something like that so when i done stuff like that or we made a little series, me and my friends, and we got known in like Sligo, and we got known down here, and people would be like, "All right, there's fucking Deadly. like all yeah. right, boys." But um, <laughs> yeah, I'd be a real shy kid. Like I, I never had that much confidence. I was a real shy kid. Um, my 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 confidence kicked in when I was I left school. Do you get me? Um, when yeah. I was able to be me fucking self, and I started my own series, yeah. and the people that were kind of like bullying or something like that, they then saw what I was doing and they were like, oh, this is fucking deadly. And then I started getting on well with them. Like, and I was like, love you. But I was the only one around there. But I, my friends then start falling out and they've done their own things and I was the only one left. So that's why I started YouTube and then we all videos. But it's good that there is um, a place that you can go, that you have a passion for. And there's other people around that have the same passion to share, the same things that they want to do. And you just go out and do projects. And that's why mm -hmm. I love that fucking group because these are... Yeah. It's also dedication to it, and that's what they want. That's not that's what they want to do with their lives, Jimmy. You know I and everybody mm. helps everybody out, and it's just it's just a great fucking group. Like, um, no, it's brilliant. Yeah, it's it's a great group. But I I do want to get into the likes of you doing your short films or doing a uh, feature films because I know you're doing uh, a feature film. I don't know if you're allowed to talk about it, but um, I had Bobby on um before, mm -hmm. and he came to the studio. We were in a little studio or so, so um, that was the last time I seen him, um, but. I was asking about Spears. Now, what yeah. I asked him about his experience. So, what was your experience like with Spears? How did you get uh, casted for that? And what was it like when you went over to the different country and done that? Uh, Bobby, again, I, yeah. Bobby gets such a Bobby great reference so... on, on this channel. It's like, yeah. Bobby's like <laughs> yeah. king. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, so when they were um, casting or looking at different casting options, etc., um, Bobby referred me to the director um, and I he just gave me his email and yeah. he's like he's expecting an email from you so I emailed him and he sent me across some sides and um, you know uh, some scenes from the script and I just did a few self tapes um, sent them off mm. got a phone call a few days later and that was pretty much it he's happy enough to cast me over the phone which was great um, and yeah, it was really interesting because I I kind of joined a bit later um, in the filming process um, and I wasn't aware of, you know, the cast or crew, etc. So it was kind of interesting to to know Bobby had already, you know, been mm. involved. And then when I had to go, it's predominantly produced up in Donegal. So I had to go up to Donegal then on my own to film some individual shots. And it was kind of interesting because that's probably the first time I've really done that, like not really knowing, yeah. like knowing like the script and having um, an idea, but not really sure exactly what's going to happen, which mm. is kind of nice in a way. Mm. Um, and it was great. Um, great crew. I mean, when it's stuff that's individual and there's no dialogue, I mean, those scenes are the best because it's mm. just all atmospheric and, you know, you just have to em embody the emotions and then you're fine. Um, and then in October, we went over to Berlin and they were for scenes with me and Bobby. And that was amazing. Berlin. That, is, that is crazy. I say Berlin. for someone that wants to make films and they're, they're going out. Yeah. And sometimes they do it non paid work and sometimes they are paid. But the fact that you just went over to a different country to film a few scenes, I say that was ex experience in itself. Like, yeah. And it was, it was crazy because we were only over there for two nights. Um, it was three days technically. But like the first and third day or last day were the like the airport days. Yeah, yeah. So we really only had one day in the middle mm. to really get everything done. And I'm pretty sure we walked about like 25,000 steps that day. Like That's we were crazy. just getting shots here, like left, right and center. Mm. Um, and it was amazing because I've never, I've never done that before. I mean, I've never gone abroad with the film, no, but I've yeah. never walked and enjoy and, and been somewhere for the first time. So I've never walked and enjoyed sightseeing a place. Mm. And then like two minutes later, it's like you're setting up a shot. Mm. Like it was really, it was almost a bit surreal because you're taking it. And like Berlin, I feel is absolutely stunning, mm. architecturally beautiful. 
and the weather was we were absolutely blessed with the weather mm. so that just made it 10 times nicer um so it was it was yeah it was a really nice experience of just kind of enjoying berlin for what it was and then just being like hold on a sec let's do a quick quick yeah. scene in this gorgeous setting and then okay Go continue back to enjoying just berlin yeah, yeah it was nice like a little holiday but um did you did you have to pay anything to go over? Do you have to pay for flights or anything or hotel no, accommodation? Was, no, it was all out. Uh, Jesus Christ. That would have been yeah. fucking great, wouldn't it? Fucking hell. Um, <laughs> that would have been so good. Um, but yeah, they, I'm, Bobby, are, Bobby in his um, interview, he he already said when it's like hopefully coming out and stuff like that as well. And I think his name is mm. Aidan O'Sullivan, is it? Yes. Was yeah. he in it? Was he, was, was he? No, oh, he is in it, but yeah. I don't have any scenes with scenes him. Scenes with him. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, most scenes were, were what, can you describe your character? Can, are you allowed to give that away? Um, I'll just go mysterious. <laughs> yeah. Right. Mysterious is a good word I would okay. use. You're mysterious, right. That's the one word then. <laughs> right. So come here, well, I, I know, I honestly, I want to know more and next time I'm going to have all of these fucking filled with everything. I'm going to look up everything because I had someone on yesterday and I had loads of shit written out. So I'd like you to come on again and um, probably down the line and we can talk sure. more about yourself. But for now, we're going to get into the last segment and guys, you know what it is by now. This is ghost stories. Ooh, scary. Right, Rebecca. Right. So I know we're talking about all this like kind of, you know, film and seriousness, seriousness, and so. But this is a favorite subject, and I like talking about stuff like this. So I have two questions for you. One: Do you believe in the afterlife uh, or something like that? And two: um, Do you have any stories um, that you can tell or know anyone? Now, it's okay if you don't, but I'm just, I just, I just need to ask. Okay. Question one: Yes. Yes. Um, I do believe yeah. mm-hmm. in things um oh stories um i don't actually have any that would be like one time i saw something or one time i Mm. um experienced something um but i can i can tell the story go ahead of somebody else that experienced something um so a couple of years ago i was on a girl's holiday and we're staying in what seemed to be kind of like a normal ish hotel um, but I'm pretty sure we were staying in like the old yeah. side, like the oh, old fuck. building. Yeah. So we weren't like, it, not that it was a modern hotel by any stretch, but it was, we were definitely in like an older kind of colder part mm-hmm. of the hotel. Um, I was grand, we had a lovely holiday. Everything was great. Happy days. Came home. Literally the minute we were back in one of the girls' houses, um, my friend's like, oh, I have something to tell you. And we were like, okay. And she's like, oh, it was when we were on holidays. And we we're like, shit. We we're like, oh my god, like, what? Like, did you do something? Or like, you know, did you what sneak happened? out or something? Yeah, or like, yeah. what happened? Mm. And she's like, um, one of the nights, um, and it was like at the beginning of the holiday, so it wasn't even towards the end. She said she woke up, and at the end of her bed. Oh no! <laughs> oh, go on, keep the yeah, go on. I love stories. I love. At them. the end of her bed, there was a woman. Oh fuck! I know you're not gonna like this part. There was a woman with long hair, yeah, brushing her hair. What's up with all these bitches fucking brushing <laughs> their hair? What you're, you're telling me? This bitch didn't do her hair before she died. What the fuck? Yeah, go on, keep going, yeah, go on. And I'm pretty sure she turned around and looked at her, and like she didn't know what to do. I don't, but she didn't do anything. She just froze. Yeah, froze and froze. And then she turned her head away, and the bathroom was opposite her bed. And I can't remember if the light was on or off, but the, the door was slightly ajar. And she walked t- towards the bathroom yep. and just like disappeared into the door. But as <laughs> but as she did, if the light was on, it flickered, or if the light was off, it yeah. turned on. And she had to get up. Because I remember she made a comment, she had to go up to like do something with the light switch or do something with the door. Did she go up out of like, bed after that? I think so. I, I could be completely wrong. It was a long went, time ago. <laughs> I would have screamed, holy shit. Now, see, I yeah. love, right? It's okay if people don't have stories, but people have stories. I just fucking love hearing them. Even if they're fucking not true and people make them up on the spot. I'm not saying you are, right? But I'm just saying if people, <laughs> some people do, but 
I just love hearing them. It's just imagine yeah. that fucking happening to you and you're in it and it's But it's she had bad. to stay like that. Like she had to keep that to herself for like a couple more nights. Wait, why is did she did she say the reasons why she kept it to herself? Maybe she didn't want to freak yeah, because herself. She, yeah, because yeah, she was like cause she was freaked, but I think certain things happened to her before, maybe not to that extent, but she yeah. was like she was not completely oblivious um, to that like that happened. Yeah, yeah, she kinda was already kind of used to it whereas obviously she knew she'd freak us out so she I need to get her on we just have to talk about ghost stories I'm telling you now <laughs> fucking I love this segment and I, I do love getting to know every guest that I come on and so but I love yeah. this segment because I just when we were all younger we always watched horror films I don't know what mm-hmm. you like now with horror films but I just love horror films same I don't get the same fright I love watching them but I don't get the same fright as I did as a kid yeah and doing this hearing that stuff I can picture in my head and I can just fucking go back to when I <laughs> was scared shitless. And it's a great feeling. Like, so, um, yeah, but lovely. Thanks uh, for that story. I fucking, I enjoyed that no story now. Um, so no before we go, uh, is there anything you'd like me to put in the description below? Anything you'd like me to pl- plug, like Instagram or anything coming up? Or yeah, something? feel free to plug my Insta. And I do have a website. Mm-hmm. I mean, it needs to be updated probably every six months or so in terms of showreel but i do have a showreel and a voice reel and my cv up on my website and it's just rebecca mm-hmm. perfect right rebecca thanks so much for coming on honestly it was fucking this was a good podcast you know when you're doing podcast like when i'm doing certain podcasts um it, it, the, the energy kind of fucking goes down yeah you have to try to bring, but it was it was fucking grand it was just <laughs> all the way through and then i know that we kind of started and went down went up but that's the that's a people know by now. That's a type of story yeah. you have to get into. Them. But it's nice to talk about serious stuff too, you know, and yeah. the reality of, of life. The ups of and downs. Yes, of life. <laughs> right. Um, guys, so yeah, that's another episode of the All Right Podcast. Um, I'll leave all the links down in the description below to Rebecca's um to Rebecca's um Instagram and so that and our website <laughs> and so so guys remember it's not the best podcast, but it's not the worst podcast. It's just an alright podcast. Guys, thanks so much for watching. Um peace. Bye.